if you strip out the BE transaction, headline earnings per share up 12% for the period, revenue up 9%. We're starting to see some traction in that consumer, especially in light of the retail sales numbers, 6.1% up for September. Your thoughts? Yeah, you know, I think for, for us, um, you know, we're pleased with, with the result, but it has been tough trading. You know, I think the uh, food inflation, uh, if we take that, sort of running at 1% out of our distribution centers, which echoes what's going on in our, our retail stores. Uh, so that has been a, a tough environment which is in which to trade. I mean, if I take our volumes that are coming out of our distribution centers, they've grown by 6% but using deflation on commodities. So, yeah, it's a tricky situation uh, on the food side of things. Obviously, uh, we've had a very good run as far as Build It and Tops go, so the liquor and the building materials uh, industry. But overall, a good performance, I think. The so liquor relatively defensive in a tough economic S environment. Seems to be good and good or bad. Do time. you think we're now on, on a solid footing, or is it too early to say? Is, is it very difficult to judge the level of visibility yeah. out there? I, I think it's a bit early to say that it's a, you know, for us, certainly as we look forward, we're positive. We say interest rate cuts have got to work their way uh, through into uh, consumer spending at some point in time. Uh, so from our point of view, we would like to believe that uh, we're at the start of something. It's not going to get any worse than that. Um, if I take some silly little examples or small examples whereby we've had, uh, I've been visiting stores out in the country areas, mines that were closed down, now re-employing. So there's some good signs out there, yeah. But, uh, but it's going to be... It's going to be tough going forward. When can we just come back to you? Said it was uh, just put this in context for me. You said it was a tough, uh, a tough trading environment, yeah, yeah. yet you grow in volumes by around about six yeah. percent. Now six yeah. percent is a fairly healthy volume growth. So sure. let's ignore the concerns about deflation and operating yeah, yeah, in that sure. world. Sure. Do you, is your sense that you're gaining market share? Or is your sense that the entire food sector is uh, experiencing similar types of trading yeah. volumes? You know, at, at this stage, the market share debate is uh, one that's been highly publicised. So we don't know the actual numbers at this stage of the game. Uh, I think the, the market is, has, has picked up. Uh, my sense of things is that we have certainly made a positive step in that direction, albeit small. I'm talking market shares and that. So I, I, I think that there has been a, 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 a general upliftment, but uh, so if difficult to try and get to the detail of it yeah so if you've got a six percent volume yeah. and you and you describe that as as a tough trading yeah. environment what sort of volumes would you like that you would yeah. say okay this is this is a great trading environment why, why, why i say tough i'm talking about from a if you if our growths uh, our volumes are growing at six percent but we've got deflation we're doing a lot of work in our distribution centers not seeing the rands so our costs uh, are start to run away with you so from our point of view the volumes Re reflect the underlying health of our business. So that we're happy with. Uh, it's dealing with the fact that there's deflation in commodities, which is a growing part of our business as we go stronger and stronger into the emerging market. And we have got to deal with more cases to dispatch out there. So keeping our costs under control, despite the fact that we've had a, a good performance in the current year, it wasn't in our warehouses where we would have hoped with our new facilities, we would have seen some more of those efficiencies come through. Paul, you but wanted you to take it here. Yeah, you're talking about deflation in food. You know, in the last four or five months, we've seen huge jumps in the dollar prices of maize, wheat, sugar, yeah. sure, you name it. Yeah. Is that uh, not something that's coming through here yet in RAND terms? It, it, it's not at this stage of the game. You know, so I think f from our point of view, we, we've seen, I think we, sort of, we saw rocketing inflation um, 18 months ago, two years ago. Yeah. We've seen some corrections subsequent to that. The RAND has obviously played its role. And I think as we go forward, you will see some of that deflation starting to unwind. Uh, that's, that's my sense of things as we go forward. Yeah. Well, I'm just quite interesting, you know, there's, 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 there's quite a lot of publicity at the moment around Walmart uh, coming into South Africa mm. as, a, as a springboard into the uh, African continent. It's really been highlighted internationally as the next, you know, growth phase. Uh, you know, what is your view on that? Do you guys have a strategy to, to grow into those markets? And if not, you know, where do you see the growth coming from? Because the food retail sector in South Africa at the moment, if you look at the valuations, they're discounting pretty good growth numbers in the coming years. And let's just put some numbers in there. I, I'm, I'm sure you're aware, but your share price is up 39% year to date. You've outperformed the broader JSC by a mark, which is up only 13% year to date. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think for us, just sticking with Africa, because that's what, that's what the first question was about. Um, obviously, it's an opportunity for us. We are already in... 
what's, we're in our surrounding territories. We've probably got 60 stores in Botswana, Namibia, Swaziland, that sort of area. We're a 35% shareholder in Zimbabwe, so we have a partner there. Uh, we've opened a couple of stores in, in Mozambique during the course of this last year, so that provides an opportunity for us. We visited a couple of other countries. Um, we, you know, for us, we are not retailers. Uh, we're inherently wholesalers, and so for us, it's re-looking at our model to go in there, you know, different from our opposition in that respect. So, but, but as we go forward, we will see opportunities, uh, we will take up some opportunities there, but we're certainly not going to go into a whole lot of countries and open 20 or 30 stores in a short period of time. Our focus is here, and in, in this part of the world, we have built it, which is at a, it has got plenty of gas in the tank, we've got tops, plenty of gas in the tank, sure, we're into pharmacies, not going to be a big uh, a big growth for us, but there's opportunities there. So we, we think that within our own country, there's opportunities to grow our business, and the others are, are nice to have on top of that. So um, yeah, that's that's sort of our strategy going forward about Africa. The Walmart question is another one, which we probably yeah, want to talk perhaps about. Perhaps another yeah. left field <laughs> question yeah. is, and you haven't had the opportunity to see the news headlines today, mm -hmm. but in terms of Metcash and Franklin's not being given the go-ahead by the Australian Competition Commission, mm -hmm. any thoughts? I, I know it's left field, it's really not your, yeah. your place to... To comment on, yeah, I'm not sure what all the reasons are, are behind it, but it's obviously because Metcash are a dominant factor over there. Um, but yeah. you, you wouldn't go the Australian route? Well, look, we, we've, uh, you know, we, we, we've been across there in the course of the last few months and we visited uh, our own operations, the spa operation in, uh, in Australia, had a look at it and decided that it wasn't for us, mainly because Metcash have got the independence tied up uh, with long-term supply agreements. So it doesn't make sense for us to rush off over there. We've had a few people from this country who've tried it over there and had, their, had bloodied noses. And in our business, um, uh, we don't see it as the opportunity that it would need to be for us to go there. Can I just come back to South Africa? Something that interests me on the property side, because you guys would start to, over time, understand quite a lot about the property sector, right? Um, the commercial property yeah. sector, in effect. Certain people in our business would, yes. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and when, you, when you're looking at um, a site or a new site or a potential site, do you find at the moment that there's a lot of choice available, there's a lot of opportunity to find good sites? Or do you find that those are very rare and that when you find some site, you've almost got to take it on board and keep it in, in hand, so to speak, waiting for a later opportunity to develop it uh, as a true sort of franchise? Well, we, we, no, we're not, we're not taking them on ourselves at this stage. We haven't, we haven't done so and said we'll take them on until we can find the retailer for it. Uh, that opportunity uh, is, is still out there. Uh, I think in terms of property development generally, I mean, we will probably open another 25 spa stores uh, if we just stick with spa. So the, the opportunities are, are still there. I mean, a lot of that work has been done 18 months, two years ago, those sort of development. On the property side, however, you know, financing is an issue, a full range of tenants. So there's definitely uh, impediments to development and it's not as free and easy as it was for the reasons that, that we all well know. So yeah, I, I think for us, despite that, we, we, we have got some opportunities uh, uh, going forward. Yeah. So, sorry, can I just yeah. ask a follow-up uh, question? Of course. <laughs> Should we all walk out and leave, <laughs> yeah. leave Kevin in here? Okay. Yeah, no, yeah no, sure, no, of course. Right. Don't worry. Okay, under control. <laughs> Not related to property go, at go all. Ahead. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Let me just ask you a general question. When I look at how SPA's done, it's done really spectacularly well in the, in the environment, right? In a, in a fairly tough economic environment, I wouldn't regard your trading uh, performance as tough. I would regard it as spectacular in terms mm. of the volume growth. Of course it's mm. deflation, but deflation is none of your doing. Mm. When you look at the, the environment that you're in, what, what, is, what is your biggest concern? When you look at the overall management yeah. of this business, yeah. what troubles you the most? What is the kind of key thing or The key other way to ask that is what keeps you awake? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lots of things keep me awake <laughs> in the moment. You know, there's all sorts of things happening in the country going forward. But, uh, you know, I mean, obviously growth for us is what's key. Our, our business at whole, on, the, on the wholesale side, that's our business, is driven by what happens at retail. Retail is frighteningly competitive, despite what you read and what you see. Everyone is out there to cut each other's throats. So that is a tough business out there. For us, our retailer's profitability going forward is, uh, is probably our number one issue. We have got to make sure that our retailers are profitable in order that they want to continue to be in this business. So 
Uh, that is probably our number one thing. Obviously, as far as we go, I talked about managing the volume growth without inflation and controlling our costs. We spent an inordinate amount of money uh, in excess of a billion rand over the last four years, and we've got to squeeze the lemon and make sure that those efficiencies start to come through our system. We've done well in the last year, costs up by 6%, but that's, uh, you know, a lot of us, uh, we don't fly like we used to, we don't do things like maybe we, we used to in days gone by. So our, our, our cost focus as we go forward is, is, particularly with a year that is going to be tough trading, is going to be there. And, uh, but if I had to say our number one priority, I would say our retailers' profitability and making sure that they want to be in this game into the future. Could, could I just add a question on, on top of the mm. question that keeps you up at night? Because yes. you kind of sidestepped the Walmart yeah. question yeah. Uh, before. Oh, well, in, we're going to worry about them. What, what, do you, <laughs> what do you think, what is the retail environment in South Africa going to look like in five years' time with Walmart as a big player in this country? Look, uh, you know, I mean, do we want Walmart to come? Of course we don't want them to come, you know. Um, but uh, so they're a big, big player, they're a threat. What are they going to do with MassMart? I don't think it's going to be a big bang approach, in my opinion. I think they will work with MassMart is a well-run company and they will add their expertise to MassMart. MassMart have made it clear that they're going to go into food uh, in a bigger way and so it's going to be another competitor to, to us. So the Walmart thing, I mean in the end it, it's healthy for, for one's business to have to relook at the strategies, all those sort of things and that's not bravado, it's going to be a challenge. Um, but and, and sure that's going to be a factor that keeps us awake at life. In five years time what I see, um, I mean, apart from spa flourishing, is, uh, you know, Walmart is going to be a, a, a or MassMart, uh, I call it MassMart, are going to be a player in the, in the food game. So there's going to be, there's going to be five of us, not four of us. So, and, and we're going to be scrapping for sites. Instead of four guys scrapping for sites, you've got another guy scrapping for a site. Scrapping for retailers, uh, all that sort of thing. And, you know, it's up to us to make sure our offer is sufficiently good that our retailers want to stay with us. Um, yeah. And surely, I mean, there'll be big margin pressure because they're a big buyer internationally and they're going to want to come in and undercut prices. They are, and it depends how they, how they do that. We know the whole issue about global sourcing and all that sort of thing and whether that's good or bad for, for our country. And, you know, time will tell us as to how that plays out because, you know, if that situation becomes a big factor, we're all going to be forced to respond. And I'm not sure that that is necessarily good for the country. But be that as it may, time will tell. We'll see how that, how that goes.